All right, guys, I'm at my local right now and waiting, of course, for my friend Harold, who's a pro golfer, to show up. It's so funny that the, uh, and I've seen this with other ones too, the amateurs are always on time and the pros are always late. Why is that? Why would an amateur take it more seriously than a guy who does it professionally? Nothing on Harold specifically, but this is, uh, this is happening to every single pro I know. He's very lax about it, very chill, who knows. So I was very excited to play this round today because I've been doing some very hard work on my swing and it feels like it's starting to come together. You never know how it's actually gonna work out on the course, but stuff on the range between the wrist angles I'm trying to set and also uh, keeping from lunging my body left I'm starting to compress the ball pretty nicely and actually control where it's going. That was a great drive down the middle. A draw about medium high, not super high. Through the fog, I could only see the start of it, but uh, that was really good. So that ball was 293 down the very center of the green. And then I had, forget the yardage here, but I had a pitching wedge going into the screen and made a, a, a nice nice impact there and put it right into the center of the green left myself with only about 22 feet now I'm testing in this video you'll see I'm testing out a new kind of uh, golf tracker but I think something about the way I did it or the way I, the way I was filming and using my camera at the same time on my phone uh, interrupted the app from working because it totally did not work at all. It only captured like the first drive on the first hole. So I was talking to the guys about that as I hit this putt and just uh, going right from the car to the to the course uh, without hitting any putts and talk and not concentrating on it. I hit it way too short and then uh, that one was a little offline. So there's Harold. Harold showed up halfway through the first hole, hit an iron off that tee. And then I don't know what he did after that. I have driver off this tee. Good tempo there. It looked a little, could have, like the hands could have been a little faster. A little more active uh, on the way through. But I hit it good up the left hand side just through the Now foot. I'm sitting about one, 140 out on this 11th hole. And let me know in the comments if you guys like this smooth shot. I'm using a new tool. Let's see if this is smooth to you. Here, walk. They go this way. I think that's pretty smooth. Yeah, it looks good. That thing is called the stable cam. There's a link for it in the description. I have to figure out better how to balance it. So 148 yards, 140 yards out here. This is a nine iron. And uh, hit it solid, but blocked it up the right hand side in high block was having a couple times this day I was having a little bit of trouble uh, with how close to stand to the ball so here's my new putting routine where I'm doing this special breathing exercise and posture uh, alignment thing to get into uh, my putting and after not really pay, paying attention to it on the four, first hole in three putting I really started uh, buckling down with it Made a great putt there from the fringe, or really a little bit beyond the fringe, and made a par there. So I'm one over after two holes. Here's Harold on the par three, 12th hole. One-handed finish, but he uh, gets it up onto the green, and uh, he'll have a birdie putt there. So uh, this is uh, a short hole, just 132 yards. Another nine iron for me. So here I'm really uh, concentrating on making sure that in my transition, my first impulse isn't to go left. My first impulse should be more to, really the way I'm feeling now, I'm really just starting to rotate as soon as I'm at the top, instead of lunging left. Hit a very good shot there, very solid, just under the hole. So a birdie chance here on my third hole of the day. Harold missed his 
already putting taps in. So same thing, I put my hand on my chest and uh, do this breathe. I'll explain it better in a putting video than I'm gonna do coming up soon, but I kind of tuck my tail in, tailbone wise, as I curl my posture down while I'm keeping my shoulders back and put that in combination with some breathing. Joking with David there, because I said you mouthed it out of the hole because he said, uh, what a great putt halfway through. And David said he wished he had the power to actually control the ball with his mouth. So drivable par four here, 318 yards. So not really drivable in this kind of weather t uh, this day. So uh, I kind of rescued that one. I could feel the club was late. So I started steering it left and that's what it did. It went left, but I kept the face open a little bit. I had good awareness this day and it cut right back into the center. So it hit it about 280 down the middle. They grew this rough here to protect the green from being driven so much. And that's a 51 yard shot, working on that wide to wider pitching yeah. motion that Monty and I have been working on. There's also a new video about that coming out. Lots of new stuff coming on the channel, so be sure to subscribe. It's a lot of cool stuff. Uh, same thing, so I'm um, getting into my posture. I'm really trying to be um, down over the ball, my eyes directly right over the ball and down close to it. Trying to be super comfortable. So obviously miss that one have this tap in for par. So stay at one over through the first four holes. Harold with uh, three wood there. Hit a pretty decent drive. And then I have driver here on this par five. That's the dog park that left fence there. And there I uh, had the face just closed a little bit as I hit it and it hooked around and landed on the car path just on the right right hand side of that car path which is a free drop to this area so then I have three wood from quite far back not really reachable with three wood I'm just looking to advance this pretty good shot a nice tempo kind of saved that so now I have pitching wedge from 128 yards so this pitching wedge here I'm really working on this wrist condition thing Monty was telling me about about keeping my wrist really solid and swinging left and not having it disconnected from where my arms going and I hit that to a tap in basically which is what this is so which is nice because I am not uh, a lot of the really great golfers that I play with they about one or two times around will hit it stiff like this. And that is not something that I do. So if I could get one or two tap in birdies like this around, I'd be stoked. So that brings me back to even par, which is cool because going into this hole, this is not a very difficult par four. It's only 333 yards. And that was my best drive of the day for sure. Really the tempo of that was, was brisk. The swing was fairly short and I accelerated into it and I felt like I could swing without lunging left I feel like I can swing as hard as I want to and not be being worried about it going left so here I'm really working on keeping my hips back and rotating through it you can see my right foot stays down a little longer than normal and uh, I hit that really nicely going up to the ball it was sitting just about I have a pitch of about 40 yards the fairways down in this area uh, they were wet this morning and didn't get much roll out and they're also kind of cut kind of long so in these pitch shots with which have been a weakness for me recently I'm really concentrating on getting that entire right arm and shoulder through the ball not just moving the right hand through the ball which is what Monty said in his first short game video but he added the caveat that not only the right hand but the right arm the right shoulder everything that entire unit can never stop when you're taking uh, these chips and pitches around the green. Did a pretty good job of that, just uh, technique was good, just power was a little bit too much. So same, same uh, putting routine here, it's really working out well for me recently. I've been enjoying putting, just uh, I've been having fun doing it. And uh, have that putt for birdie, 
and made it. So back-to-back -back birdies on the par five and the par four brings me to one under par. And feeling pretty good about my swing. So here I was really working on, uh, when I'm setting up to this par three, this is an eight iron, 146 yards. Really good tempo there. Really good. I'm telling you, maybe I'll watch the kid for you. Thank you. Yeah. Like my sponsorship opportunity is available. David was goofing with me there, and you can see where I hit the ball to. A really nice shot. David was goofing with me there, saying that he would watch my kids if I would go and play in the Long Beach Match Play Championship, which is my favorite amateur tournament in this area, bar none, but I'm not able to play in it this year due to family obligations and also because uh, just didn't feel like I was playing well enough, but that's really not a good excuse. So anyway, uh, missed my birdie there, so I stay at one under, and then hit a very good drive here. Went a little left, but let's check out the slow-mo here. First of all, backswing is looking a little bit better than normal there, which is a promising sign. And then uh, transition was good. Stayed in my posture nicely, and didn't get too far up off my heel. Uh, it's not perfect, but like I always say, I'm not trying to be perfect, I'm just trying to be better so here is my approach shot so it's a par five and I got I'm, I have 206 yards to the hole and I'm trying to hit a low hybrid under that tree and kind of rope hook it in there and I pretty effectively did that as normal my hybrids are usually the best shots that I hit all right Howard, so here uh, excited on this par five the right yeah, here's Harold for birdie Here's Harold with an opportunity to get up and down for birdie in some thick rough, short-sided, and that was just really a great soft shot. It oh. was good. Harold hit it to nine feet. I didn't to catch it on the camera, but he did make that putt for birdie. So then here I am after seeing that shot. I really was kind of trying to emulate the same thing, but uh, I usually never watch somebody else's swing while I play. And it would have been a better idea just to kind of ignore what I had seen because I tried too hard to do what he did. Nothing. I tried to play like a bunker shot like you did and I just hit the ball clean. Hit it too far. Now Harold's holding the stick for me. So this is my bid for birdie here on the 17th hole. Lagged it pretty nicely, but not stone dead. So I go in to tap it in and made it. So I stay at one under par for the round. Going into the 18th hole, 400 yards, uh, right around 400 yard hole. And you usually want to hit this up the left hand side, like I try to pull it on this hole a little bit. But I, uh, I was thinking about my setup there and for some reason I decided to stand a little closer to the ball. And in doing that it made my hands come up higher and I smothered it. Actually hit it back into the par 5 and uh, it got through clean so at least I had a chance to advance it you can see it's got to go under all those trees and there's the green up there so here's three wood from really far away for, from over 200 yards or just about 200 yards but I'm trying to hit it very low and I thinned it a little bit made a good pass but I thinned it now I have 111 yards to the hole with a 50 degree wedge this is my Nike 50 degree wedge and I'm really thinking about that stable left wrist through impact that swings left. Same thing uh, Monty was telling me about. So it's a, I do not really know how to explain it, but uh, I'll probably ask Monty more about it on our next live show. But that was a really good shot. I left that just under the hole, so I have a little less than nine feet to shoot one under. So I'm really going for, for my full routine. You can see I'm kind of slouching my shoulders as I'm breathing out and tucking my tail in and really trying to focus in on getting comfortable and making this putt. It wasn't a perfect 360, but that was more like, that was probably 290 degrees all the way around the hole. But the real problem on that hole was the drive. Bogey felt bad, but par 36 felt pretty good. So thanks for watching everybody and stay tuned.